Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nupula. I do apologize for not having any videos up for the past month. I have been sick with a respiratory virus that's been going around in the area for three weeks. And recently I have injured my shoulder somehow. And now I'm on muscle relaxer and steroids to help with that. So it's been a fun month for me. No pun intended on that. So without further ado, I am going to show you my new Phantom Knight deck. Now before I get into anything else, I want to point out, this is not a Burning Abyss deck, this is not PK Fire, this is not um, the uh, Fire Knights. This is pretty much as close to a Phantom Knight deck that I see myself making. Until we get better su uh, support for Warriors. So let's get into it. Three, Kagamusha Knight. What this does is whenever you normal summon a monster, special summon this from your hand. It cannot be used for synchro material. It allows you to get into your exceed plays real quick. Next, we get into three Marana Captains. He allows you to make exceed plays and he is also a rank three, which allows us to get into our rank three plays real quickly. Now the real tech. Three, Silent Swordsman. Silent Swordsman pretty much states that it needs to have a warrior type monster on the field tribute to summon it. During the standby phase, it gains 500 attack power. If, you're, if a magic card would be activated during either player's turn, you can negate it. If he would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, then you can special summon a Silent Swordsman monster from your hand or deck, ignoring the summoning conditions. Which goes into the next guy that I have. So far I have two of these right now. I will try to acquire a third one of this rarity. Silent Swordsman level seven. What he does is he makes all spell cards on the field um, negated and useless. This won't stop people from using the pendulum monsters as pendulum scales and all that. But it will stop tricky cars like Regeki and stuff like that. And he can be summoned with, of course, Silent Swordsman. Normally you couldn't, but with Silent Swordsman's effect, he's easy to bring out. And he's a warrior, so he fits the theme real nice. Now we get into the Phantom Knights. Ancient Cloak, which allows you to search for the Phantom Knights and in which case we do have a lot more because of the new stuff and the new support then we got Rag Gloves which allows you to send Phantom Knights from the deck to the graveyard by banishing it from the grave he also whenever you exceed into a dark monster increases their attack by a thousand this is not an option it will happen regardless of um, if you intended to or not. Silent Boots, pretty much you can special summon them from your hand whenever you have a fan line on the field. Um, that's not a restrictive effect. And once per turn in the graveyard, you can banish it and search pretty much spell or trap card of any fan lights. Currently, I'm running two allures, they might get cut because of Ash Blossom. But if they do, I do have some ideas of what I want to do later, but we'll see what happens. But they're self-explanatory, you just draw by banishing in the dark. One Mystical Space Typhoon. This might become two to three with the allures if Ash Blossom becomes more of a problem in my locals. Hopefully I won't see it, but I at least have one in here in case if I need to quickly kill something off. One pot of liquidity. Probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Don't care. Y'all know how I am. But you pretty much shuffle three face-up monsters that are banished to either player's deck. Draw one card. This allows me to utilize my fan lights or extra deck materials and everything like that back into the resources so I can get more. One reinforcement in the army. 
because we need to search for any warrior we want with the exception of level seven silent swordsman and three silent sword slash now the first thing we got to talk about is this when it's activated and it's a quick play effect it targets a silent swordsman of course level seven is not going to care but when you target these silent swordsmen he will gain 1500 attack permanently also he's unaffected by your opponent's cards and effects for the remainder of that turn and the activation of this card on the field cannot be negated or chained to if he is in the graveyard you can banish it even on the same turn and search for a silent swordsman pretty much good versatility when it comes to keeping up the pressure and of course so charge monster born practically to re-establish your exceed plays three the phantom knight rank up magic launch which allows you to get into your rank plays for rank fours pretty much you target a exceed dark monster make him into a rank four or higher depending on how you want to do this but pretty much rank four and then this will become the equipped car or um, exceed material along with the exceed material or exceed monster that was used to bring out the new exceed and if this is in your graveyard you can banish it target a Phantom Knight monster in your hand and equip it to a dark monster or dark exceed monster that has no materials on it. So it keeps things fresh. Upstart Goblin, a one draw plus. However, with Ash Blossom, it might not matter. A lot of people are going to be like, well, why are you doing that when it, why would you waste an Ash Blossom on this? Trust me. We have some weird people at our locals. So, but I might take it out as well for other stuff like a um, my body's a shield or something of that nature to protect my monsters on the field next we're going into one of the best traps that they ever made for phantom knights uh phantom knight block or the phantom knight fog or i'm sorry phantom knight fog blade pretty much finish chain um and your opponent cannot attack the monster or he can the the equipped card i cannot talk to them apologize the equipped monster cannot be attacked, nor can it um, do it. Do it. Uh, it cannot attack, nor can it be attacked, and has its effect negated. Also, if it's banished from the graveyard, you can special summon a phantom knight from your grave, but it gets banished if it gets um, sent from the field. And of course, the new one, the Phantom Knight of Lost uh, Vanbridge. Bram, ah, Van Bryce, I'm sorry. What he does is he targets a monster on the field. It becomes a, um, the monster loses 600 attack and has its effect negated. After that resolves, this becomes a monster and becomes a defense position monster with 600 attack, zero defense, level two, and it is not treated as a trap. Also, it, it also, whatever monster it target, it becomes a level two monster. And as long as there's a Phantom Knight on the field, Phantom Knights cannot be destroyed this turn. So. And of course, the Psalm Warning. Don't know if that's gonna stay or not. But if the Allures and Upstart, I might, switch this out to the Psalm Brigade, but we'll have to see what happens. That is the main deck so far. Changes, of course, were going to occur because this is version 1.0. Next, everyone's favorite monster, Dante. He is essential for beginning plays because he allows you to send stuff to the graveyard, mostly Phantomite stuff. And of course, one Dark Rebellion Exceed Dragon and it's upgraded version which are going to be very important next we have nightmare and this 
D pretty much keeps swarms to a minimum. He prevents level five or higher monsters from being summoned as long as he has material. And this guy, in case if I need a body to be protected, my life points, then he will do it. At least from monster effects. Ghost Trick Alucard. He's essentially a rank free dark. So launcher has a target. Sea Dragon allows me to get back my materials. Nightmare Shark allows me to do uh, late game scenarios, mostly kill my opponent off. Um, Utopia Future, which allows me to capture monsters that normally cannot be targeted. So, And of course, two of the Break Sword, pretty good uh, monster. And the new guys. The Cursed Javelin. He pretty much requires level 2 monsters, but that's where the trap comes in. The trap allows me to make a monster a level 2, and he is a level 2 when he's on the field. Which allows me to make it into these guys. Now, pretty much what he does is you can target a monster on the field. Monster's attack becomes 0, and his effect is negated. If you have the Phantom Knight monster as material, you can also activate it during your player's turn. But you can only use that effect once per turn. And that is pretty much it for this video. I don't know if this deck is going to do good or not with the current format, but I want to see what happens. Uh, I liked any input, and I do appreciate it. Thank you, and good night.